recording. So this, uh, for this class, it can be helpful to have two blocks and a strap or something that can be used like blocks and like a strap. We will also have our knee down at some point in a lunge. And for those of you that are familiar with my class style, I always recommend a little pillow or a folded blanket under the knee because we go for comfort. We are not going for restriction and effort. We are going for comfort in this. Um, and I wanted to just speak a little bit about our theme and then we're gonna just dive right into our practice together. Theme for today is embracing change and enjoying the dance. So a few things that I'll just share that what's inspiring this theme. One is that um, some of you know that I took a flight last week to take my daughter to go visit one of uh, the potential schools that she would uh, was going to, you know, she's not going to that one, but it was so worth traveling for it. But what was really cool about being back out in the world and getting on an airplane is it reminded me of just the awesomeness of what happens when we travel and that we never know who we're going to meet or who you're sitting next to. And it's just that openness that happens when we go into kind of traveler's mindset, as I want to call it. And at one point on our flight out to Ohio, there was um, a man sitting next to me and he was reading a book by Thich Nhat Hanh. He was reading No Mud, No Lotus. And at some point I turned to him and I said, you know, it's one of my favorite books. And he kind of grunted. He's like, oh, and I said, huh? And he said, I've been working with this one for a long time. And I said, oh, have you been practicing with Thich Nhat Hanh for a long time? Have you been in this practice? And he said, no. And I said, a lot of mud. And he said, yeah. <laughs> and it was so lovely just to have that little moment. And, you know, just like that little moment of like, gotcha, man. Like I get the mud, right? And and, you know, we, we just never know, right? That story that we've all heard, like we never know the journey that any other you know, human soul is walking through, like what their mud is, what, they, what they're making their way through in the world. So, um, so, you know, as always, I invite you to arrive on your mat with tremendous compassion for your own journey. And also to know that when we join together in a community of practitioners, it is, so good to know that we are all walking our own journey. We're all coming in this with whatever, whatever we've brought, whatever we've got. Um, the, there's, there's probably so many directions that I could go in what I'm sharing, but one of the other big transitions that happened in our home this week is that my mother-in-law who has lived with us for four years, moved into a memory care facility. She has Alzheimer's and we've been her primary caregivers. And embracing that transition has been so deeply profound for our family. It has been so heart opening, like a lot of just generosity and deep appreciation. Like that last month that she was with us, um, the most incredible heart opening love of every gift that she gave us in every moment in like caring for her in the hard moments, caring for her in the loving moments, just extraordinary. And uh, speaking of Thich Nhat Hanh, um, I was inspired to, in some ways, bring his, his wisdom, especially the wisdom of impermanence, into this class for today. And one of the um, quotes that I'll bring from him is that, and I'm going to read this here, when we know that the person we love is impermanent, we will cherish our beloved all the more. Impermanence teaches us to respect and value every moment and all the precious things around us and inside us. When we practice mindfulness of impermanence, we become fresher and more loving. So I will invite you to join me in what we'll call traveler's mindset for this next 90 minutes of practice. And what I mean by that is as we get onto the mat and as we move together, Traveler's Mindset is going to invite you to be with the transition and the experience between the poses. Sure, there may be destinations that we'll arrive to, but it's all of those nuances that we meet along the way and those parts of ourselves that we meet along the way that are going to be our wise teachers. And to listen sometimes for, as you open up, what is, you know, what are you drawn towards? What do you feel aversion towards? 
all of that just as information, right? That as emotions arise, uh, as feelings, as memories, as thoughts show up, that we're always gonna be leaning towards some and leaning away from others. And that is, um, it's guidance, right? As I was sharing earlier about the knee down and having something soft under the knee, there is also an invitation to go towards that soft landing in yourself. Like what helps you, even if there's something that is uncomfortable, allow that to have some cushioning around it so that it doesn't have to be a harsh greeting towards whatever that might be. Okay, so with all of that, I'll invite you to go inward for a moment. To just notice for yourself what this initial share has touched, perhaps what's moving inside of you, even that which has inspired you to show up on your mat today, Noticing your breath and your body. And from this softer, more inward place, I'll invite you to receive the words of this poem that uh, my mom shared with me yesterday and I knew when she read it, it was the right poem for today. So I sometimes forget that I was created for joy. My mind is too busy. My heart is too heavy for me to remember that I have been called to dance the sacred dance of life. I was created to smile, to love, to be lifted up and to lift others up. Oh, sacred one, untangle my feet that from all that ensnares, free my soul that we might dance and that our dancing might be contagious. We will make our way into this dance. That poem, by the way, from Hafiz, beautiful sacred Persian poet. I'm going to move back onto my mat, a little transition here. And we, the invitation, and you can always opt out of this invitation because it can be a little knee heavy, but see how it feels and if it's right for you. Give myself a little more light. Is the invitation is to start in what we call Vajrasana or rock pose, sometimes called thunderbolt pose or diamond pose. I have a lot of names this one, but sitting on the heel. And if your knees say, no, I'm not sitting on my heels, Ariel. Oh, no, thank you. Then sit cross-legged. That is perfectly acceptable. I'm going to change one more view for myself so I can see what you're seeing. Okay. And if you want to come into a version of rock pose, but again, your knees are cranky, you can also take one of your blocks and lift your hips a little bit higher, which can take some of that pressure. You can also place a bolster between your hips and your heels. So options. And I'm gonna go with that block. And arriving in this shape, which itself offers a place to practice. Now, just as you arrive in the shape, we're always arriving, right? So you might wiggle in, you might explore, moving your torso a little forward and back, your shoulders can roll forward and back, allowing yourself to continue to arrive and settle into yourself. And just allowing the breath to breathe through you. Allowing this breath to move. We do not need to control the experience. Simply noticing the feeling of your breath and what is present within you. And 
once again, I will offer up the words of Thich Nhat Hanh with this moment of seated in Vajrasana, breathing in. I know that I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know that I am breathing out. As my in-breath grows deep, my out-breath grows slow. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I feel ease. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Dwelling in the present moment. I know this is a wonderful moment. And an invitation from here to just find some gentle movements of your spine, lifting your heart, allowing your spine to curl. And again, either seated in rock pose, Vajrasana, maybe on a block, maybe you're seated cross-legged, maybe you're seated in a chair or at the edge of the couch, all welcome. Breathing your spine with the breath. And then if you have a strap or a scarf or a belt or a tie nearby, you might begin to explore this movement with the arms holding on to the strap. And you can play around with the distance, the wider your arms are on that strap, the more range of motion we tend to have. So you can go so wide perhaps even that the arms dropped back down behind you and we're not kind of wiggling or, or too tight in the shoulders. We have a nice wide girth here to really free up the spine, the shoulders, you might lift and lower the chin. Just breathing yourself open to joy. And you can take this into a little bit of free form and you might even bend one elbow and the other. You can change the distance of the strap, right? You can play around with what just opens up into the armpits and maybe even the side bodies get into this. You might even take the strap around in a little spiral motion. So what I love about binding with the strap is that we have this little resistance here. And it's sometimes through the resistance, it's through that place where we have some tension that we can open up a little bit further. And it's again, a beautiful metaphor for life, right? How do those points where we feel the edge of resistance help us learn more about ourselves? Our yes, our no, good. All right, another moment here with the strap. And I'll invite you to release that down, to release the block you've been on that or come off, off of your heels for a moment. And we're gonna tuck the toes under. So with the toes tucked under, you can again kind of wiggle yourself back towards your heels. And if that's a lot on the knees, you might be way forward. If it's a lot on the tops of the feet or the soles of the feet, some of you might choose to turn the fingers back and then rocking just slightly backwards into the fingers as we open up through the wrists and then maybe 
settling up into toes pose. You can widen the pinkies out, allowing yourself to feel maybe a little bit of awakening or heat in the feet and the shins, the ankles. You might even choose to clasp your hands behind your back. And if that's not available, we have a strap, right? So you can hold on to that and opening a little bit across the front of the chest, shoulders once again, sending your breath into any places calling for your attention. Beautiful. And then we're going to untuck the toes with those hands perhaps clasped here. Just a little bow forward toward yourself. Well, resting into yogi mudra as we sit the forehead down and continue to lift the clasped hands up overhead. Breathing behind the shoulders. And then settling the hands down by your feet for just a moment, a pause in embryo. This is also bija or the seed pose. So we are settling into that seed casing here that holds all of the potential within you. That potential for expansion into joy, into the dance. And then slowly we lift up. You can use your hands to lift. And this next little transition, I'll invite you to take the weight over to the right for a moment as we free the left foot forward. So we're in a little half malasana, half squat here. And from this position, and again, you might be up higher if your knee is cranky or your, your top of your foot, right? You can play, play around with this. And that's really what I mean in this shape. You're just going to make it yours. I'll show it from a few different angles here, but you, know, you can kind of lift up, you can lower down. You can explore what it feels like to move a little side to side, lifting away from the heel and back down. You can crouch in. It's almost like if that right leg were behind us, we would be in lizard, but we've got this interesting little half frog thing going on. Okay. Now from our half frog, I'll invite you to lift up. So now I'm gonna walk that left leg right out to the side. So I'm kind of a 90-90. And then with the left elbow or forearm onto the left thigh, we're gonna reach into a little variation of an extended side angle. So just an opportunity to greet the side bodies in a new way today. So right side body as we reach the right arm overhead. And of course, with the knee and foot down, we've got this mobility to reach toward the left knee and away as well. Just finding this, making it yours, letting it feel good. Beautiful, let's come up and over. This time the right hand can settle to the earth and that left foot reaching long, maybe left arm reaching up overhead. And here we've got a lovely side opener once again, side two. You might gaze down, you might lift your gaze, lift your heart. You might keep that left foot down or you might even explore how it feels in your body to lift through the left leg as well as the arm. Some free form here. Again, being in traveler's mindset. Noticing how your body wants to move through space. And then slowly coming back down around to center. We'll free the right leg to the side and we'll start right here. So finding your way into this little half frog, kind of like the lizard, you can crouch on in. You might lift on out, might reach away from the leg and lean toward it. 
feeling how much potential there is in this shape. It's almost like you could kind of go quickly into any position from here, right? If you were the frog and there's a little dragonfly or a fly or something, you know, one of those water striders, right? Like you're on it. So allowing yourself to really feel that potential in your body. And then from here, we'll lift up. We'll find our side body. So you can turn that right foot to the right, begin to lean in. Maybe that left arm comes overhead. And we'll just move with the breath, your body, your practice. And come in and out of that right knee. Beautiful. And let's come up and over the other way. Left hand descends, right foot grounds, right arm maybe reaching overhead and then make it yours. Maybe you lift that right foot, just allowing yourself to feel the space and the strength. And when you're ready, we'll come back around to center. This time, I'll show this from the side for a moment. We're going to take the right knee forward of the left, lift the left knee to take the right foot across. And then we're going to tuck the left knee behind the right knee and sit down between the feet. So from this angle here, we're sitting back into a cow facing pose or in the yin style shoelace shape. And that can be kind of intense. Need a block, use a block, right? So you can lift your hips up out of the shape as needed. You can deepen in. Some of you are the flexible ones who say, I still don't feel it. Then you'll lean forward a little bit. So making this yours, wiggling your way in. It's the transition into the shape today that we're going for. Some of you might prefer to have a little padding or a lift of that right knee, right? So really listening to your body, adapting this. I'll offer up one more option from this shape, which is to add a little twist. So we're gonna twist upper body toward the right. And I'm not using my hands at first, just allowing the central core of the body to facilitate that twist. And then we can rest the right fingertips behind and the left hand here on the outside of the left or the right knee. And your gaze might come around the right shoulder. You might just soften through the neck and allow the head to rest wherever you feel comfortable. Remembering that comfortable in this shape <laughs> might feel impossible, but it's only temporary. So the joys of impermanence right here. Taking just one more breath here. And we'll find a really fun and funky transition. So we'll lift the knees, the hips, and walking around to the left, all the way around. And we end up with the opposite knee on top. And if some of you said, what the heck did you just do? How did you get there? However you would like to arrive with left knee on top of right. That's just our traveler's transition here. So allowing yourself to settle into the hips, your spine, any micro movements, any adjustments with a block, hello your hips between your knees. 
You can always straighten out that bottom leg. I didn't say that on the first side, but you can know that's always an option here if it's too much to have both knees bent. And it's a beautiful practice for breathing into the pockets of sensation or tension or discomfort. And if it's going towards the edge of pain in the knee joints or anywhere else, then back off, please. And perhaps adding in that twist. So hands free at first, turning towards the left, and then allowing the hands to rest down simply for support, exploring what feels right in your neck and your gaze. And then slowly unwinding. This time we'll bring both legs out in front and then you can just knock the knees, shake them out, you can toss the feet side to side, windshield wipers, and we've got American style, we've got European style, so, you know, wherever you're in, you're welcome. Okay, and then an invitation to come all the way down onto your back. So riding down on your back, and taking a moment to acclimate, we've come to a new relationship to gravity. So noticing what's a present for you here. One thing that I uh, could have said before you lower down is that it'll be helpful to have a block once you arrive here. So you might be transitioning back up to sitting, grabbing a block and lowering back down. So that's nice and handy. And arriving here on your back, I will invite you to bend at the knees, planting the soles of the feet and lifting your hips to place that handy little block or folded blanket bolster under your hips. Maybe you've got a book. Right? And then taking a moment just to feel this shape. From here, an invitation to take your right knee up towards your chest, and you can wrap one or both hands around that right shin. You can keep the left knee bent. This will be the gentlest variation, or some of you might begin to extend that left foot along the floor and the leg long. And this will begin to bring more sensation, at least very likely more sensation in your left hip flexor. This is a beautiful practice for opening into the hip flexor and the psoas, but we go in gently, there's no force. So you can feel how as you draw the right knee in and you reach the left toes away, that might amplify the sensation. And you can always drop the block. So the block, of course, is gonna make this a little more intense. I've got my low setting on the block. And if you're really looking for more intensity, you might shift to a mid setting. Once again, you can use the breath here with intentional breathing, sending your breath into those areas of sensation. For me, it's in my left hip flexor. So breathing as if in a, into a straw, just right into those places of tightness. And then we'll slowly re-bend the left knee, settle the right foot back to the earth. And we'll come into side two. This time left knee comes in, we can clasp around the shin. Feel how your body begins to soften into this shape and then maybe begin to extend that right leg long. So when we come into working with the psoas, we recognize that our psoas muscles help us prepare to meet the challenges of life. We can think of them as our stress responders. The contraction allows for us to 
prepare for movement, whether that's to flee or to fight, right? We've got that potential energy that builds inside, especially when we don't mobilize. And we're just waking up a relationship to where that's held in the body. It'll come in handy for where we're going to. So if you find those tight spots, rather than feeling critical towards yourself for being stiff, perhaps thanking your body for holding that potentiality for you. until you're ready to use it. We're gonna go ahead and soften into the right leg, planting the foot, we'll release the left foot to join it and pressing into the feet to lift the hips, release the block. And this time we will take the block and place it between the inner thighs. So we're gonna come into some core strengthening shapes now and for those of you that are new to my class, I really like to add some um, core work before we come into standing postures, but it also really just helps us mobilize that solar plexus, the navel plexus in the body, which is a profound nerve center and third chakra. So hands behind the head to start here. Inhale and exhale, just simply lifting. We're lifting right up toward the ceiling and we inhale to lower. So sorry, we exhale as we lift. Inhale, lower. Moving with your breath, allowing yourself to remember that the core wraps all around the body. It's not just at the navel. So the back body is part of your core, the inner thighs, are actually a very essential part of the core, which is why the block here helps. Strengthening here, that classic frontal core. And we're gonna low down, lower down through the upper body and an option to lift the feet off the floor for the next few of these. So tabletop through the legs and exhale as we lift and inhale lower, moving with your breath. Squeezing the block if you've got it. Okay, one more like that. And we'll lower upper body, lower the feet. And I'll invite you to take the hands overhead. Now you can do this next series with hands um, uh, behind your head if it's too much for your neck. Otherwise, I'm gonna invite you to exhale, sweep your arms around, lift through the upper body, pause. And then we're going to inhale, lengthen the legs. Exhale, lower the legs. Inhale, lift the upper body one more inch and exhale, lower, sweep the arms back. So multiple parts to this breath, I'm gonna talk you through it again. And we're going to exhale, lift. Inhale, lift the legs. Exhale, lower the legs. Inhale, lift the upper body. Exhale, lower down, arms sweep back. Take a breath there, inhale. Exhale to lift, upper body. Inhale to lift the legs. Exhale, lower the legs. Inhale, one more inch. Exhale, lower it down, arms sweep up. Inhale here. Exhale to lift upper body. Inhale, legs. Exhale, feet down. Inhale, one more inch. And exhale, upper body down, sweeping the arms. One last one like that. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower legs. Exhale, feet down. Inhale, one more lift, and exhale, we lower. Hands behind the head. We're going to create a variation on this one. So again, you might listen carefully. We're going to take left elbow toward the right. Inhale, free the legs forward. Exhale, lower the legs. Inhale, head and shoulders to center a little higher. 
Exhale, lower. Okay, squeeze the block. And exhale, right elbow to the left side. Inhale, lengthen through the legs. Exhale, lower the legs. Inhale, lift head and shoulders to center. And exhale, lower down. Left elbow to the right. Inhale, lower legs. Exhale, lower legs. Inhale, everything to center. Lower it down, exhale. Inhale here. Exhale, right up on left. Inhale, send the legs long. Exhale, lower the feet. Inhale, center lift. Lower it down. One more time each side. Exhale, left elbow to right. Inhale, send the legs long. Exhale, long. Inhale to center. Lower it down. Right elbow to left. Inhale, lengthen the legs. Lower the legs. Inhale, center. Lower it down. Release the block. Whew. Draw the knees in. Maybe rock a little side to side. Thank yourself. Giving yourself this gift of connecting to empowerment in your body. A little bit of heat, tapas. And then hands behind the knees, a few rocks on the spine. And then we're gonna rock right up and over the shins into a tabletop. And for a few breaths here, just let yourself move in any way that you want to move. Integrating what we've done so far. Maybe you feel your core away for your inner thighs speaking. <sighs> Lovely. And you might stay with that free flow or perhaps you'll join me coming forward here, allowing yourself to bend at the elbows, keep the, hip, the hips lifted for a moment, lowering through the chin, just a little pause in this inchworm shape, breathing right into your sacrum and exhale to the earth. From here, we're going to greet and strengthen through the back body. So just a few breaths to connect into that feeling of being grounded on the earth, particularly right through your navel. So you might have some subtle movements in this transition. And then allowing yourself to begin to get curious about the world. So you can find some lift through your shoulders, through your head, through your gaze. And you might use your hands or you might even free your hands up to just be, be like one of those kids playing Superman here, like, whoa, what a cool world we live in. And you can lower back down. And you might even explore how it feels to lift your feet off of the earth. And a little bit like a sea creature, like a jellyfish here, you can move with the breath and expand into the lift and then soft into the earth on the exhale. A few more organic breaths like this. You can explore what it's like to keep the legs straight or maybe even to bend through the feet a little, bend through the knees, I should say. And lower. One more here. Lovely. And then with the hands down, let's press back here. A brief moment, just touching into child. Not even staying here for more than a breath or two. And then we'll transition back up into um, a little cat cow here. And just an inhale, lifting through head tail. Exhale, curling it all in. 
a variation if you'd like. The toes are long, tops of the feet grounded. We inhale, head tail, and exhale, we lift the shins off the mat. So we're just on the tops of the toes here. Inhale, we can lower the shins and lengthen. And one more like that, just a little strengthening motion. And then from here, back into cat cow this time i invite you to curl the toes under inhale here and exhale press back into downward facing dog and we're really taking our time with this transition so knees can be bent as long as you'd like maybe you walk it out breathing into the hips the thighs maybe you like the both knee bend variation, our little crouching tiger here. Whatever is serving you in your practice today. And you might continue to explore here or we'll play with some transitional moves between downward dog and plank. And we can roll forward the way that a wave might come to shore, making our way forward to plank and then bending the knees deeply as we draw our hips back, making your way back to downward dog. And then lifting up onto the toes, you can allow your spine to wave forward so that the upper back is coming first to the shore and then the head comes forward last. And then re-bend through the knees. One more time, your own way into this transition. Pressing back into downward facing dog. And then we'll walk the feet a little wider, walking the hands toward your feet and pressing back into Malasana, little squat here. So we visited this with one leg at a time earlier. Now we've got our full little squat here and you can wiggle your way in, right? A little side to side movement. How does your body want to make this shape yours? My body is thirsty. Exploring, maybe settling into just a little bit of stillness. You might even place palm to palm in front of the heart as the elbows make contact with the inner thighs. Inner thighs can press back. And many of you are familiar with this next transition. Some of you might be dreading it, <laughs> but we're going to press to standing. We use our hands here. And again, like a transition, like a child standing for the first time, allowing your hands to help lift you all the way up. Curious to the world. And then we'll repeat. So settling back down, that transition down into your squat and you know, your squat might be right here. That's just fine. You might be moving from seated in a chair to standing. So working your way as your knees and ankles and hips permit from our squat, reaching with the hands, reach, 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 press, press, press all the way up. Three times, let's come back down. Third one, gather, 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 generate, right? Really pull from the earth, really draw it in. No mud, right? Let's be the lotus flower blooming here, pressing in. No mud, no lotus, but we've got it here. We're connected to the earth. We lift up to stand. And then for a moment, hand to hand to your heart, either palm to palm or hand stacked over stand, hand. And just see what you notice, feel your heartbeat. What's happening inside, maybe you're warm. Good. Releasing the hands. I'll invite you today to take a hold of the left wrist with the right hand 
And just a gentle bend over towards the right, breathing the side bodies once again. I like my feet hip widths apart. You can feel that out for yourself, what works for you. And we'll go the other way, switching the grasp of the hands, holding the right wrist as you come to the left. These can be down, forward, or up. One more time each side. Beautiful. And then coming back to center. Now I'll invite you from here just to step it out wide. I will take the feet wide and I'll invite you to uh, turn your toes in slightly. So we've been kind of opening up into the knee, hip, ankle joints and where we're going has another version of that. And I'll show you some variations because again, this is a bit of a knee heavy uh, class. So slightly bent knees to take a forward fold here. And as you come into your forward fold, you can always use a block to bring the floor closer. I can, maybe the hands are on the earth. The knees might continue to be bent. You might work towards lengthening through the backs of the legs, but there's no goal. There's no better or worse. Allowing your head to be heavy, you can shake it out one way or another. Uh, let your voice go. Releasing whatever doesn't serve you so you can show up more fully in this moment now. Hmm. And then a halfway lift. And we'll come into a surfer's lunge or skandasana. So we're gonna bend into the left knee and I'm taking my left foot out so that my knee is tracking over that knee. And then my right foot is gonna lift, but you can always take that foot down. So there's a lot of variations of this shape. And you might even point and flex through that right foot, get the fuzz off your right foot. <laughs> and just allow yourself to find your way in. Now, a variation, if you're saying my body doesn't go down there, right, is to be up here. So you can have this as a very lifted surfer's lunge or right down, like you're getting ready to catch that wave, whatever you're going for. Some of you might even wrap that left arm around the front of the shin, and you can even clasp the right hand back there, a little bind in this shape, but that doesn't really, serve you if it doesn't serve you. So if it feels good, explore the balance, right? You can take palms to heart. You can lift through the upper body. All right, you can bounce a little bit. Let's walk it to side two. So let's take it across, just a little walk through the park here, traveler's mindset. And you might be low, you might be lifted, all welcome. And you can find your way in on this side. So you might flex and point that left foot. You might have that left toe coming forward or flexed, balance, or maybe bind. Notice how it feels to let your head go here or to lift up. And right. so many different little nuances of each shape and each way that we change in it changes how it feels. Okay, let's come back to center. So this time I'll invite you to take both toes slightly out and bend at the knees to lower the hips. And in this variation of our goddess or horse pose, I'll invite you to take your elbows down, forearms down just a little side to side. So we're in a, in a nice high squat this time, just breathing the shape. Might even bounce a little in the shape, that can feel good too. Inner thighs, hips. And then pressing into the feet, we'll come all the way up to standing. Here we are again. Let's step the feet together. 
Again, maybe checking in with your body. I'm a little thirsty. It's very warm here today. We'll find our way through a sun salutation here. It's taking your hands behind you this time if you'd like. We did this earlier. You can use your strap if you prefer. And just take a moment to draw the knuckles down, the shoulders back. Connecting to breath. And then from here, and once again, I like my feet hip widths apart, taking a forward fold into Yogi Mudra, bowing the head, drawing the hands up overhead. Quite a lovely metaphor of bowing the head to the wisdom of the heart. Deep appreciation for this moment. And exhale, releasing the hands. Inhale, finding a half lift. And exhale as we plant hands, stepping back. And your choice, you can come to the earth for cobra or exhale halfway down, rolling over the toes and lifting the heart for upward facing dog. Again, no right, no wrong. We meet in downward facing dog. Breath, arriving. From downward facing dog, I'll invite you to bend at the knees once again, a little crouching tiger. And we're gonna use this to step the right foot forward. So we're going to come into the tiger Really imagine that you're stepping that right foot wide to the outside of the right hand and right. Some of you know I like that sound with this one. So let's do it again. Just really finding that transition in the body, being with the movement from one shape and to the next. And for some of you, you're going, I'm using my hand to get my foot forward. Great. However you want to get here, enjoy your transition into the shape and taking a few breaths. Here is where I invite you to have a little cushion available for that left knee. So you might take a few breaths with the knee lifted, but eventually I'll invite you to lower that left knee onto something soft. And then we'll lift up into a little crescent moon shape here. So lifting up, finding your way into this, and it's a balance shape, right? So that when we're in this um, one knee down, we don't always think of this as really requiring our core, but it really does. Especially when we add the arms in. So throwing the arms up overhead, and this just we did standing, clasping the left wrist and the little side bend over toward the right. Now you might once again find some sensation in the front of your left hip. And we'll free up that left hand and I'll invite you to come into an open twist. So I'm showing this from a few angles here, but just a nice open twist toward that right side. And some of you might stay right here, or you can place the right hand on the sacrum and begin to lift that left arm up. So we're exalting our crescent moon. You can keep your gaze down over the right shoulder. Remember, it's a balance pose. You might take your gaze up to your left fingertips. And then slowly unwind the arms, this time both hands to the inside of your right foot. You can step or toe heel that right foot out to the side a little bit, right toes tracking to the right, just a tad. 
and then maybe turning over toward that right thigh and the dragon lunge here and maybe you lift the left foot maybe you reach the right arm back maybe you take hold So if Thich Nhat Hanh says that embracing a little impermanence every day is good for the soul, opening up your quadricep every day is good for your body, <laughs> okay? Let's come on out of that one. And we're going to stay on this side a little bit longer. This time I invite you to toe heel that right foot back in so that as you lift the left knee, your feet are kind of tracking in the same direction. You can keep it wide enough. You're not on a balance beam here. And then from here, an open twist. So grounding into that left hand or fingertips and then allowing the right arm to lift. You can even check in with your sacrum, nice stable base, lifting through the right hand. And here's our tricky transition. Play with me if you'd like, the dance, the joy. We're gonna wiggle those right fingertips and lift the left fingertips off the ground and pause. And we are in a very in-between place, dancing in the limbo here, and then wiggle those fingertips a little bit more, and it can lift you all the way up to that twisted crescent pose. Now, you might stay right here, or just as we did with the knee down, right hand to the sacrum. Maybe you lift the left arm up, your gaze can be over right shoulder, or maybe you lift your gaze. On an exhale, we free the arms and making your way all the way back down to the earth, stepping right foot back to meet the left. And you can walk it out for a moment. Maybe you let both knees rest and you press back into child's pose for a moment. Whatever you need to let go of what just happened. Sure, your mind already knows that side two is coming and that's just fine, but it's not here yet. And then slow. We'll lift up on this side, curling the toes under and pressing back downward facing dog. So just as we explored on side one, we're gonna use our little crouching tiger, catch that potential energy as it lives in your hip flexors, in your sacrum, in your psoas, Gaze to the outside of the left foot. Imagine left foot getting there and then whew, take a step forward. Let's do it again. Really feel that potential energy. Imagine it first and then whew, arriving. Beautiful. A few breaths here, maybe preparing that soft landing for the right knee when it's time. and then allowing right knee to rest down. You can take a few breaths in and out of the lunge. And then walking up with the upper body into this supported, but rather balancey shape. And this time we'll take our side bend to the left, left hand taking a hold of the right wrist and up and over. You can gaze down under the left armpit. Maybe you gaze up. Lifting up on this side and we'll open the twist toward the left. This is a beautiful place to stay. Some of you might place that left hand on the sacrum and begin to exalt as you lift the right fingertips. Maybe the gaze tracks downward, 
maybe the gaze tracks upward. And then up and around we go, hands to the inside of the left foot, toe healing the left foot out to the left. Toes can, excuse me, track at an angle. You can find your way in here. Maybe you begin to take this into a twist. Perhaps you join me in a little healthy dose of a quad opener and we open through the arm. Doesn't matter if you take a hold. You can always use your strap here though if you want. Or maybe you take hold of the foot, kicking into the hand, using the hand to open the leg. Now, of course, there's an opening across the heart as well. Hips and heart so deeply connected. And slowly, slowly, unwinding, hand to the earth, and this time, allowing your foot to toe heel, left foot tracking so that we're um, hip width apart with the feet or so. And then we'll prepare for our next wild transition. So right hand a little out to the right, taking your left arm up, pausing here. You might even check in with your sacrum, nice solid base, little teacup there, right? And then wiggling your left fingers and then perhaps wiggling your right fingers as they float off the earth. Wow, right? Staying right here in the in-between, not quite grounded, not quite lifted. And then wiggling the left fingers a little more as they take you all the way up into a twisted crescent. Maybe those left hands, left fingers go onto your sacrum and perhaps lifting the right arm, exalting here. You can gaze over the left shoulder or maybe the gaze lifts. Slowly, slowly. Unwinding, coming back down as we lifted, and then stepping left foot back, meeting the right. You can walk it out. And I'll invite a brief pause, knees to the earth, either into child or embryo or puppy dog or water drinking pose. Just arriving. Slowly, slowly, up we go, rounding into the hands and taking a moment actually, have some blocks nearby. So here's where I like the two blocks and you'll see why they come in handy in just a little bit. So if you've got two or two books or soup cans, you know the deal, right? And then from here, let's press back, downward facing dog. This time we'll take a different transition to that right foot stepping forward. So an invitation to reach that right foot back first, a little three-legged dog shape. And then on an exhale, we're gonna draw right knee towards the chin. We'll pause for a second, just really feeling the strength of that shape. Let's reach back again, inhale. And exhale, this time forward and through, gazing where your foot is to land, using the strength of the abdominals as you step forward. Now, blocks can come in handy, an invitation to shorten your stance. We're gonna come into a pyramid pose. So this is very 
uh, hamstring intensive and you can keep a bend in that right knee as much as you need to. We're working towards lengthening the spine and really finding that flattening or the, um, the squaring off in the hips as noted by the little teacup that can balance on your sacrum. So you can use those blocks under the hands here to find a nice long spine and maybe from there folding in. Blocks or no blocks. So if you could imagine that even this shape itself is a transitional place, all of the little micro movements of breath and softening and adjusting as the posture changes with each breath. And then with a halfway lift, I'll invite you to lengthen your stance again. So it's taking that left foot further back. And from here, I'll invite you to either have that hand on the block, right? Or on the floor, or you can even lift up with elbow to your thigh, but we're gonna come right into an extended side angle. So we had this shape earlier with the knee down and now the knee's lifted. Allowing yourself just to find your way in some different transitions today. Now you might be using the block. You could also explore what happens, and I'll just show this with my hand in front, what happens if you let that right hand float. So we're really engaging through the side bodies. You can even use those left fingertips to reach as you find that floating action. Being in the in-between, and eventually floating all the way up to warrior two. Just a few breaths through the shoulders, the arms, the chest. And then this time lengthening through the right leg, reaching away. Reverse triangle, letting this in itself a transitional shape be its own worthy exploration. And then exhale, long reach, 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 and rotating the arms, Trikonasana Triangle. So this next transition, a little bend into the right knee, inhale, we'll find a halfway lift. And on an exhale, we're gonna turn into a low lunge. So block's handy, block's handy here. We've lifted that left heel. I'm gonna step my right foot back just enough to have my hands under my shoulders as I lift the left leg, left foot off the earth. So now it's a one-legged halfway lift. Pretty powerful shape in itself. We can explore here a little bit by bending into the right knee, bending the left knee behind it, curling it all in, and inhale, reach, expand. Once again, drawing it in. Inhale, expand. And maybe, maybe you add the arms in this plate. So we're lifting the hands now. We are in a floating little airplane, a dakasana. See what happens if we go into that contraction, no blocks. So this time, knee behind knee, palm to palm, curl it all in. If you fall, the ground's not far. Inhale, pressing into the right foot. Expand, reach, transitional space. Wow. And then this time, we're gonna bend the left knee and come up to standing. So you're still pressing into that right foot. You might be feeling your right glute, right leg. You can take a moment to take hold under your left leg. And one, 
final big shape here. We're gonna send the left heel back, open the left palm and catch the top of the foot. Now, if you needed to touch your foot down, gain your bearings, all good. Eventually, I'll invite you to join us in the dance, pressing foot into hand, feeling the resistance as we open into dancer's pose, not Tarajasana, using your gaze for balance, feeling how you are in between the future, calling you forth, the past reminding you where you came from, and that right foot firmly rooted in the mud. All right, slowly, slowly, unwind it out. Left foot can come to the earth. Let's shake out the right leg. Whew. Feeling it? Good. Wiggle it through. We've got side two. Let's go play. Remember, we're created for joy. Sometimes we forget. Inhale, let's sweep the arms up. Exhale, let's fold it in. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, planting your hands your way to downward facing dog. However you would like to get there. Honoring your experience. From downward dog, inhale to free your left leg behind. Exhale, knee to chest, knee to chin, hover and hold. Feel the strength and the potential. <sighs> inhale, reach. Gaze forward, set your sights on where your foot is landing between your hands. And we arrive with blocks or without. I'll invite you to make your way into pyramid, which involves shortening that stance slightly. And we start with the long spine, maybe checking in with the sacrum, squaring off the hips, greeting the back of the left leg, which might have a story to tell. Maybe a little shake here. It's all good. All signs of your aliveness. Maybe you fold in. Eventually lifting up and sending that right foot further back, widening the stance, preparing to come into extended side angle from the ground up. You can use that block and then allowing the right arm to sequence up, maybe overhead, reaching in the same direction as your crown, maybe reaching up toward the ceiling, whatever is serving you and maybe staying here, or perhaps it's those right fingertips that lift you into the transition. And we pause, feeling yourself floating in between, not fully lowered, not fully lifted. And then slowly, slowly, we lift all the way to warrior two, even here, the breath moves you. And then we'll take this into a reverse triangle as we lengthen the left leg, we reach away and pausing here. That reprieve on the left leg you now know is well worth your while. <laughs> Let's take it into Trikonasana long reach, rotating the arms. You can use the block or maybe you float it, whatever supports you in this shape. And then slowly 
We re-bend into the left knee, inhale into warrior two. And exhale, we come forward, lifting the right heel, and we find our way into a low lunge. Once again, I like to step my left foot back enough so that as I lift my right leg, hands on blocks stacked under the shoulders, lots of room. And then the pause, feeling the strength of your body, the strength of that left leg, and maybe bending left knee, right knee, tucks behind, curling it all in, tight ball. Inhale, expand. Curling it all in. Inhale, reach. Option to explore all of that without the hands. We find the kasana, we find a little balance here, like flying above the earth, a little Superman, except this time we just have one little point of contact down there, Superwoman. Right, And then maybe we draw it all in, curling knee behind knee, palm to palm, tighten it up. Inhale, expand. Feeling a little shake in the leg. And then this time we're gonna bend into the right knee and bring it all the way forward and through. Maybe you stay balancing on the left leg the whole time or you set the foot down. All welcome, a little pause, acclimating to balance. And then into dancer we go, right leg, sending it back, right arm opens to receive the foot, clasping here, turning hips and heart forward, reaching the left arm, and then we press foot into hand, feel the resistance, the bow, getting ready preparing you to fly forward. Feeling the dance of your pulse, your breath, your aliveness, all those micro movements in your left foot. And then slowly coming on out, placing right foot on the earth, now shake out that left leg. Woo, shake it all out. You guys are awesome. I know I gave you a challenging practice today. Thanks for hanging in there with me. From our standing shape, we have one little littler exploration here. Let's take it wide again into our goddess. Feet are turned out. This one's just a little bit more of a flow with transition. And what I really invite you to explore in this last standing sequence is the potentiality that when we're, you can kind of watch me and join me in this, that when we're in these shapes where we've got a nice wide base with the earth, how we can kind of move in any direction, right? And we can even take a little further where we move toward the right leg, lift the left heel, and then rotate it around through, lift the right heel. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just feeling that sense of flow and pacing with your breath. Just integrating, maybe it begins to feel a little bit more like Tai Chi. And as we come around, left side, right heel lifted, I'll invite you to pause. And just one last little exploration here. See what happens if you keep the bend in the right knee, but you lengthen the left. Or if you're the opposite side, that's fine. It's the front leg that straightens. And with that, maybe lift the heart, open the palms, 
Lift the gaze. Slowly pressing back up, fluid movement as we transition back around, perhaps to what is the front of your mat, or if not, it doesn't matter, we're just going to side two. And in side two, we bend into that back leg, we lengthen through, in this case, my right leg, whatever right leg is in front for you, lengthen that out. It's a balance, isn't it? Open the heart. Open the arms, maybe lift the gaze. And then rebend, begin to lift up as you press into that back foot. And this time, allowing yourself to come forward, stepping the right foot back, or however you would like to make your way back down to your mat. As we arrive here, taking a moment to come to sitting with your legs out in front. Sorry, cross-legged, but if your legs are out in front, that might feel good too, right? However you want to just come into a seated shape. Perhaps from here, it'll be a little variation on pigeon. We're gonna come into deer with a fold. So we're gonna take the right knee to the inside of the left foot. Now the right foot's behind, so we're at a bit of a 90-90 here. And take a moment here just to find that mobility in your hips. Some of you have done this deer flow with me before and you can explore how it feels just to Twist through the spine, the left, and drop the hips to the right. And then perhaps allowing yourself to come forward over the left shin. And it's a little bit like pigeon, but with that back leg deeply bent, just a soft landing. And you might want a little something under your head. You can lift the floor up and use a block. You might choose to stay there longer, or you can press up here and extend the right leg long. So now you can come into a forward fold over the right leg. You can even twist the navel towards the center of the thigh and use your hands to come into a forward fold. And if you are someone with lumbar spine challenges, you might work with a long spine, most protective for the low back. And if you are someone without those challenges, you might explore folding and rounding in. You might even explore what it feels like to walk the left hand to the outside of the right leg and take that twisting action of the shape just a little further, breathing into the left hip and low back. And then slowly lifting up. We'll take a very brief visit into a side bend here. So opening that right leg a little bit wider and you can take the right hand, even elbow to the thigh, hand resting, head resting in the hand or 
maybe elbow to the inside of the leg. Just a few breaths. Gazing down or up. Integration shapes, softening and slowing down. And then we'll lift up here. And we'll take this all on the other side. So bending the right leg, this time it's the left foot that goes behind, a little 90-90. And moving the hip, the spine. Mm. Maybe it feels good. I hope it feels good. And then perhaps beginning to fold over the right shin. Maybe that block where you can rest your head on your hands. Slowly pressing up, this time extending the left leg long. And we turn toward the left leg to start as we fold into Jhana Shastasana. Working with a long spine or rounding in, whatever is supportive for you in this shape. Staying here, or maybe you begin to walk a little further to the outside of that left extended leg. And then perhaps joining me in one last side body opener, left leg to the side. You can use your elbow on the thigh, taking a little kickstand for your head, or maybe you lower that arm. Maybe the right arm comes up and over. And slowly lifting up. Drawing your knees in, giving yourself a hug. And rolling all the way onto your back. We will take just two more minutes of restful integration. Tuning in if there are any final shapes that you need. And if you'd like, eventually extending your legs long, opening the arms wide to the sides of your body, palms toward the ceiling, shoulders heavy, back of the head heavy, eyes release their seeking, jaw softens, tongue releasing away from the roof of your mouth. Teeth separated, nothing to grip upon. Heart receptive, belly soft. Letting yourself soak in your practice, be nourished. as you receive 
your practice, I invite you to once again receive these words. I sometimes forget that I was created for joy. My mind is too busy. My heart is too heavy for me to remember that I have been called to dance, the sacred dance of life. I was created to smile, to love, to be lifted up and to lift others up. Oh, sacred one, untangle my feet from all that ensnares. Free my soul that we might dance and that our dancing might be contagious. There is always the invitation to stay here longer. That was a lot of movement today. And these unusual transitions can invite our brain to grow, right? Invite our bodies to grow into these unknown spaces. So taking the time to integrate all of that is well worth your while. And for those of you that are ready or need to make this next transition back up to sitting, I invite you to do so mindfully. Really appreciating each step along the way as you deepen your breath again. Maybe wiggle your fingers and your toes. Perhaps pausing to bend your knees, draw them in. You can rotate your hands around the wrists and feet around the ankles. Maybe you roll to one side, a little gesture of returning back to that fetal pose, that embryo that we began with today. Knowing that all of these transitions are simply invitations to begin again and again. As we begin again together, perhaps making your way up to seated, noticing what has changed within you within this short 90 minute practice. It always still feels short to me. receiving very consciously those markers of your own evolution. Perhaps palm to palm in front of your heart, palm to palm in prayer, whatever calls to you here as a connection, a gesture, a way of honoring and closing this practice. The willingness to grow and to be open to change within me honors and bows to the willingness to grow and openness to change that lives within each of you. Namaste.